hello guys and welcome back to my channel in today's tutorial we'll be learning how to make this beautiful notched color jacket if this is what you like to learn kindly stay tuned please don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and please give this video a thumbs up so the first thing i'll be doing is to draft out my back pattern now i've gone ahead to divide my hip by four because my jacket will be resting on my hip circumference so my hip divided by four is the figure i just marked out which is 10 inches so that is what i used to create my block so the next thing i'm doing is to create all vertical measurements my shoulder to chest line measurement and that is what i'm rolling out now so the next measurement i'm taking is my shoulder to half length now the front half length and the back half length will be on the same level and i'm gonna have to take my shoulder to half length and the next one to take is my shoulder to jacket length and as you can see i'm using the whole of the paper that's the length of the paper to create my jacket length so the next thing i want to do now is to go ahead and mark the neckline for my back which is three inches wide and one inches deep so i'll go ahead now to use my curve to connect like that so the next thing i'll be doing is to measure half of my shoulder measurement which is seven and i placed it on the shoulder line and before i place it on my chest line i'll go ahead to take the tightening at my back i use 0.75 for the tightening and i took it on the half length of my back and i'm connecting it to the neck area of my back and i'll close it up at the m of my jacket like this so the next thing i'm doing now is to place my shoulder measurement on my chest line and i'll go ahead to connect with a straight ruler so after doing that i'll go ahead to take one inches for my shoulder slope and i'll connect it to the nape of my neck like that all right so i'm done doing that the next thing i want to do now is to look for the midpoint for my shoulder slope to my chest line which is 3.75 inches and i go in by half an inch and I'll connect to the shoulder slope with a straight ruler. So once I'm done connecting with the straight ruler, I'll use my curve to connect the rest to the chest line area like this. Alright, I'm done doing that. So the next thing I want to do is to take my nipple to nipple measurement, half of my nipple to nipple measurement, which is three and a half inches so on that line i'll connect it to the chest line and i'll connect it to the m of my jacket so i'll go ahead to take 0.75 that intake to the left and to the right of that line And I'll come down by 1 inches on my chest line area just to connect to the 0.75 intake I took. Like that. So I'll come to the end of my jacket and I'll go up by 1 inches. And I'll close, use the 1 inches to close up my dart like this. To the right and to the left. I'll close it up. Alright, so I'm done doing that. The next thing I want to do is to divide my bust measurement by four and add a little bit ease because i do not want my jacket to be too tight so i'm adding 0.25 ease to my initial measurement and i'll go ahead to take all the measurements same thing on my waist too i'll add back my dart intake so i do not have shortage and i'll connect them to the hip to the end of the jacket and i'll connect from the bust area to the waist area like this and that's that for my back pattern for the jacket i'll go ahead now to connect from that point to the ammo point just to create a style line around that part so at the end at the end of my um jacket for the back i'll come up by one inches because i want it to be a little i have that slight curve by the side and i'll connect with a curve to that that line area just like that i hope you can see that all right I'm done drafting the back pattern, so we move to the front. So for your front pattern, you need to leave some allowance at the upper part because you need room for your collar. So I've gone ahead to leave 5 inches allowance at the upper part of my paper 
and at the side of my paper also i'll also be going in by four inches or five inches so as to enable me work on my lapel so i'm marking out four inches from the side of my paper and i'll take it down to the jacket length and i'll connect so i'm done connecting the next thing i want to do is to divide my block is to um, get my block and in doing that i'll be using my hip measurement remember i told you the hip measurement is the largest part of my body because the jacket is resting on my hip level so i'm also t making use of the 10 inches i use for the back so that is what i'm using to create my front block also so i'm going ahead now to connect it to the jacket length so once i'm done doing that i'll go ahead to take my neckline and the neckline for the front is three inches wide and three inches deep and i'll go ahead to use my cuff to connect like this so once i'm done with the neck area i'll go ahead to take all vertical measurements and in doing so i'll be taking my shoulder to chest line my shoulder to nipple point my shoulder to front half length and my shoulder to jacket length remember i told you the half length i use for my front or the half length i use for my back will be the same thing there isn't going to be a difference in your half length so on my shoulder line i'll go ahead to take half of my shoulder measurement and i'll do the same thing on my chest line area so as i'll connect the both points together so on that line i'll be taking my ammo curve so i'll come down by one and a half inches for my shoulder slope and i will connect it to the nape of my neck so the next thing i want to do is to use the figure i use for the back arm or i'll place it there and i'll come in by 0 0.75 on that point and i'll use a straight ruler to connect from my shoulder slope to that 0 0.75 inches and i'll use my curve to connect to my chest line area So the next thing I'm doing is to put in my nipple to nipple measurement, half of it, and I've placed it from the center front, and I'll connect it to my shoulder to nipple line, and I'll connect it to the end of my jacket, that's the end of my jacket length, like that. So I'll go ahead to take 0 0.75 that intake, the same thing I did at the back, to the right and to the left. And once I'm done doing that, I'll come down by 1 inches from the shoulder to nipple line, and I'll connect with a straight ruler to the 0 0.75 that intake. And on the um, jacket length, I'll come up by one inches also, and I'll close up my darts. So I also create a style line at the front. So from my one inches, I'll connect to any part of my arm O just to create that um, precise tie line at the front also. So the next thing I'll be doing is to divide my bust measurement by 4. And I'll add 0 0.25 inches because I do not want my jacket to be too tight on me. I just want a little bit of an ease. Don't forget on your waist area to add back your dart so that you do not have a shortage. So I'll connect all lines together from the bust to the waist and to the hip. So I'll go to the side of my front block and at the side I'll come up by one inches at the end of my jacket and I'll connect it to that dart line just the same thing I did at the back and once I'm done doing that the next thing I want to do is to mark out my button allowance in doing so I can decide to use one inches or one and a half inches for the button allowance you mark it from your center front line and you connect to the end of your jacket like that just create that one inches extra for your button allowance so the next thing i'll be doing is to determine my break point now for every jacket there is a break point but for this particular jacket i'm making my break point is coming on the waistline so i've extended that line outside so as to indicate it to be my break point line there are some jackets that the break point is at the under bust now what is your break point your break point is that point where your lapel is ending or where your button is coming in so that point is your break point so the next thing i want to do is to get my back pattern and measure what i have as the neck area 
so everything i have as neck area for the back is 3.5 in most cases is always 3.5 so from that point of my neck i'll measure 3.5 inches upward that was why we left the allowance i measure 3.5 inches upward so i'll go ahead now to use my straight ruler to connect from that 3.5 inches to my break point line on the button allowance that's on the button allowance i'll connect from that 3.5 just like that all right you can see you can see the way i connected it so the next thing i want to do now is from that 3.5 i'll come out a little bit by half an inch or 0.25 inches so from that point i'll connect it back to the present line that's i'll connect it back to the line like that so you can see what i've done so what i want to do now is to come down from my original leg like that my three inches deep neck i'll come down by half an inch like that and i'll place my ruler slantly to connect to that slanted line and to the outer part of my paper so the next thing i'm doing is to measure how wide my collar is going to be and here i'll be using four inches for the width of my collar so from the half inches i came out by that is what that is where i'll be marking that is where i'll be taking it so my ruler is not going to be straight like straight it will be a little bit slanted so just make your ruler a little bit slanted and then connect so once you are done connecting under your original leg line where you came down by half an inch at that point i would be going i'll be coming out by two and a half inches but my two and a half inches will not be in a straight form it will be also in a slanted form that is where your notch is coming in so i'm using two and a half inches wide you can decide to use you can decide to make yours two inches or one and a half inches wide it's your choice and you can decide to take it from your button allowance but i'm taking mine from the center front line area at the exact point where i came down by half an inch so i'm making use of my angle 45 on my curve to create that direction how i want i want the notch to be open the angle 45 will serve as a guide so you don't open up your notch too much so uh i think the direction i want it to be is too open so yeah i'm trying to cover up that line so that i can redraw the direction of my notch because i don't want it to open so i'm remeasuring so as to be sure i have my two and a half inches intact so that's what i'm doing and i'm done doing that so the next thing i want to do is to measure the lower part of my notch your lower part of your notch can be a little bit um longer than the upper part of your notch so for the lower part of my notch i'm using three inches wide you remember i used two and a half inches for the upper part of my notch so i'm connecting the three inches at the lower part of my notch to my break point to my break point um level like that so i'm using my curve to connect like that you can use a straight ruler to do the connection so from that upper part of my notch i'll connect it to my collar area the that's the end points of my collar area the wideness of my collar area so i'll connect like that i'm using the not to cover part of my curve to do the connection so the upper part that upper part is the collar and this area here is the lapel is the lapel So why this open part is the notch that what makes the jacket a notch color jacket so yeah i'll be cutting out so that you can see how you can cut yours so i'm cutting the back pattern first please watch closely
So you need to label your pattern so that you don't mix up your pattern, especially with the side of the front and the side of the back. So now I'm cutting out the front pattern. Please, you need to watch closely while cutting out the front pattern. And that's everything about how to cut and draft a notched collar jacket. So in our next video, we'll be learning how to draft a jacket sleeve because the jacket sleeve is a little bit different from the normal sleeve. If this video was helpful, kindly give this video a thumbs up. Please do not forget to hit the subscribe button below. Feel free to share so that a lot of people can be reached through this video. Thank you for watching and see you in our next tutorial.